When her name is mentioned, a lot of controversial thoughts come to mind. Some believe she fooled the entire world and called her names while others sit on the fence. But in reality, one thing is for sure, Donya Drake would never have gotten away with her identity stunt if she was an actress in this era. But was it just a stunt to deceive the public, or was there some other reason, deeper than the world knows? Her story is pregnant with ups and downs and back and forths, but in the end, Donya Drake remains stamped in the sands of time. Who is Donna Drake? Donna Drake was born as Eunice Westmoreland. She entered this world on November 15, 1914, in the vibrant city of Miami, Florida. Growing up amid the roaring 1920s, she was surrounded by the rhythmic beats of jazz and the colorful energy of the era. Raised in a loving household, Donya was the daughter of parents who instilled in her a strong sense of determination and a passion for the arts. Miami, with its blend of cultures and influences, provided a fertile ground for Donya's early development. From a young age, she found herself drawn to the enchanting world of performance. Whether it was singing along to records on the radio or dancing in the streets with friends, Donya's natural talent and magnetic presence were evident to all who knew her. So it did not surprise anyone who knew her when Donya fell in love with entertaining and performing. Her journey into the performing arts began as a child, when she would eagerly participate in school plays and talent shows. Her captivating stage presence and ability to command attention caught the eye of teachers and peers alike. It was during these formative years that Donna discovered her true calling, to entertain and inspire others through her art, and she wanted to do it in the biggest way possible. Fueled by her passion, Donya sought out opportunities to hone her skills and refine her craft. She immersed herself in the world of dance, studying various styles and techniques with dedication and enthusiasm. From ballet to jazz, she eagerly embraced each new challenge, eager to push herself to new heights of excellence. As she entered her teenage years, Donya's aspirations only grew stronger. With dreams of gracing the stages of Broadway and the silver screens of Hollywood, she set her sights on a future filled with endless possibilities. However, Donya's life was not all peaches and roses. Despite her undeniable talent and unwavering determination, Donya faced numerous obstacles on her path to success. As an African-American woman in a predominantly white industry, she encountered discrimination and prejudice at every turn. Doors were often closed to her simply because of the color of her skin, leaving her frustrated and disheartened. As discouraging as this was for her at the time, Donya refused to be deterred. With resilience and perseverance, she continued to pursue her dreams, undeterred by the challenges that lay ahead. And then, finally, her breakthrough came, a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. Opportunity knocked in the form of a chance encounter with a talent scout who recognized Donya's potential and offered her a chance to shine. It was a moment of triumph and validation, a sign that her hard work and perseverance had not gone unnoticed. And with that, Donya's journey into the world of entertainment began in earnest, setting the stage for the remarkable career that lay ahead. A Family of Chameleons through the lens of United States census records, each census snapshot offers a glimpse into the shifting sands of racial identity and classification that shape Drake's complex heritage. In the year 1910, the United States census paints a picture of Drake's familial roots as it unfolds in the warm embrace of Florida. Here, her father is recorded as black, a testament to the rich diversity of her paternal lineage. Alongside him stands her mother, hailing from the distant shores of Alabama, also marked as black. It's within the confines of this census document that the seeds of Drake's identity are sown, rooted in the soil of her African-American heritage. Fast forward a decade to the year 1920, and the landscape of racial classification becomes more nuanced. Once again in Florida, the census records Drake and her parents as mulatto, a term that speaks to the intricate blending of racial identities coursing through her veins. Here amidst the swaying palms and balmy breezes of the Sunshine State, Drake's identity takes on new dimensions, shaped by the ever-evolving currents of racial categorization. As the years unfold and the nation marches forward, the 1930 census beckons us to Pennsylvania, where Drake and her family find themselves once more under the gaze of the enumerator's pen. Here they are cataloged as Negro, a reminder of the enduring legacy of racial inequality and segregation that permeated American society. 
By the time the 1950 census rolls around, Drake's story takes an unexpected turn. In Pennsylvania, her father and brother are listed as white, marking a stark departure from previous records. Meanwhile, Drake herself, now known as Doña Travila and residing in California, is also classified as white. This dramatic shift in racial classification serves as a poignant reminder of the fluidity and subjectivity of racial identity in America. As with Freddie Washington in 1934's Imitation of Life and several other black females whose skin tones and facial features enabled them to pass for white such as Lena Horne, Donna would have to deny her family heritage to succeed in the entertainment industry because at the time and for many years after, the studios felt the movie-going public wouldn't accept an attractive black actress, no matter how talented, in any role but that of a servant or comedic sidekick. Certainly not as the romantic lead opposite a white actor, even Hollywood knew the rest of the country paid its salaries. After Aloma, Donya appeared in Louisiana Purchase and then in the 1942 Bob Hope Bing Crosby classic Road to Morocco. Along with numerous appearances in many of the Hollywood gossip columns published across the nation thanks to the studio's publicity buildup, Drake performed in Hollywood nightclubs between film assignments as well as helping the war effort, boosting soldier morale by appearing on the covers of such publications as Yank and the Army Weekly. As we delve deeper into Drake's heritage, we uncover layers of complexity and contradiction. Despite her likely African-American roots with some white heritage from her father's side, Drake often presented herself as Hispanic, a testament to the fluidity of identity in a nation marked by diversity and complexity. Her ability to navigate the shifting sands of racial identity with grace and resilience speaks to the enduring spirit of resilience that defined her remarkable life journey. The Birth of Una Villon It was in the year 1932 that Doña first graced the spotlight, stepping into the limelight under the name Una Villon. As a chorus girl and performer in the smoky nightclubs of the era, Drake's talent was undeniable, her presence magnetic. In 1933, Drake's star ascended to new heights as she landed a coveted role in Earl Carroll's Vanities. Here, she captivated audiences with her mesmerizing performances, earning accolades from critics and fans alike. Paul Harrison, writing for the Indiana Gazette, hailed her as a noteworthy newcomer, drawing comparisons to the legendary Anne Pennington. Her youthful exuberance and undeniable talent set her apart, proving that she was destined for greatness in the glittering world of showbiz. The following year brought even greater acclaim for Drake as her star continued to rise on the Broadway stage. Columnist Walter Winchell took note of her electrifying performance in a nightclub, praising her unique ability to synchronize the rhythms with her mesmerizing movements. Drake's torso shifting and wiggling commanded attention, earning her praise as a true virtuoso of the stage. With each performance, Drake's reputation as a rising star grew, her talent and charisma captivating audiences wherever she went. From the dimly lit clubs of Broadway to the dazzling lights of Earl Carroll's vanities, she left an indelible mark on the hearts of all who beheld her. As the curtain fell on each performance, Drake's name shone brightly among the stars of the golden age of entertainment, a testament to her undeniable talent and enduring legacy. But Donna did something even more remarkable. She changed her name one more time. From Una Villian to Rita. In 1935, Drake adopted the name Rita Rio, a persona that would soon become synonymous with her electrifying performances. Featured at the illustrious Paradise Cabaret, Drake dazzled audiences with her multifaceted talents, seamlessly transitioning from singing and dancing to mastering an array of musical instruments, including the piano, trumpet, clarinet, saxophone, and drums. Her versatility knew no bounds as she occasionally took the helm, leading the orchestra with confidence and flair. But Drake's journey was not without its twists and turns. In 1936, she embarked on a new venture, joining forces with another woman to form an orchestra of their own. However, financial woes plagued the group, prompting Drake to set her sights on a new horizon, Hollywood. In 1940, she ventured westward, where she underwent screen tests under the name Rita Shaw, hoping to make her mark in the glamorous world of cinema. It was during the early 1940s that Drake's star truly began to ascend as she settled on the stage name Doña Drake, a persona that would come to define her illustrious career. 
Studio publicity during her heyday perpetuated a myth about her origins, falsely claiming that Drake was of Mexican descent and born Rita Novella, a fabrication that added to her allure as an exotic beauty. With her striking angular features and dark curly hair, Drake was often cast in ethnic roles, portraying characters ranging from Latina to Middle Easterner, American Indian, or Gypsy. Her versatility as an actress knew no bounds as she seamlessly transitioned between roles, captivating audiences with her magnetic presence. Drake's talents extended beyond the realm of ethnicity, as evidenced by her notable performances in non-ethnic, non-musical roles. In the 1949 comedy The Girl from Jones Beach, she showcased her comedic chops as the second female lead opposite Eddie Bracken, leaving audiences in stitches with her memorable performance. Yet Drake's journey was not confined to the bright lights of Hollywood. In the early 1940s, she embarked on a nationwide tour with an all-girl orchestra dubbed The Girlfriends, Alongside fellow Hollywood actresses Marie Wilson, Toby Wing, and Faith Bacon, Drake crisscrossed the United States, enchanting audiences with their captivating performances and infectious energy. The Deep Dark Secret As she stepped into acting, Donya led a life shrouded in mystery and intrigue, characterized by a complex interplay of racial identity and public perception. She embraced various stage names such as Una Nola and Rita Nola. But what was most fascinating here was the fact that Donya expertly navigated the entertainment world with a chameleon-like ability to adapt to different ethnic identities, often presenting herself as Mexican despite her mixed-race heritage. During the early 1940s, Drake's career soared as she frequently landed roles that capitalized on her perceived ethnicity, portraying characters ranging from Middle Eastern to Latin American backgrounds. One of her most notable endeavors during this time was her leadership of a traveling all-girl orchestra known by the moniker Rita Rio, later rebranded as Doña Drake and Her Girl Band. Drake's performances, both in dance and music, captivated audiences and solidified her status as a rising star in Hollywood. However, behind the glitz and glamour of the spotlight, Drake harbored a deep and closely guarded secret. Despite her public persona, she chose to conceal her true racial identity from the public eye, a decision driven by the racial dynamics and prejudices of the era. No one knew her true identity as being African American. If they knew, she'd probably not get roles, she thought to herself, and so she decided to fool the entire entertainment industry into seeing only the persona she created. She had to live a lie, but she was ready to, for the sake of her career. The Toxic Romance Between Drake and the Law in addition to her hidden racial identity, Drake became embroiled in a scandal in 1936 that further fueled speculation and intrigue surrounding her personal life. The FBI questioned her involvement in the mysterious circumstances surrounding the passing of Louis Amberg, a well-known mobster, and Drake's boyfriend at the time. Drake's responses to the authorities were cryptic, providing little insight into her relationship with Amberg and leading to further speculation about her connections and allegiances. Additionally, Drake found herself entangled in another event that further fueled speculation about her personal life. Alongside her spouse, she attempted to shield their relationship from the public eye, a move that ultimately backfired. There were so many questions about her. Why did she do that? What was she hiding? As we delve deeper into Drake's career, personal life, and controversial past, it becomes evident that she was adept at eluding the scrutiny of the outside world and maintaining a veil of secrecy around her true identity. Despite her rising fame and success in Hollywood, Drake repeatedly sought refuge from the prying eyes of the public, often resorting to changing her identity and escaping into anonymity. The reasons behind Drake's penchant for escapism and identity transformation are multifaceted. For one, she sought to distance herself from the controversies and scandals that surrounded her, or maybe she yearned for a sense of freedom and autonomy away from the constraints of celebrity life. Whatever the motivations behind her actions, Drake's ability to navigate the complexities of fame while evading the trappings of stardom only adds to the mystique surrounding her persona. Her Stealth Journey Through Hollywood Donna Drake's journey through the world of entertainment was a kaleidoscope of identities and performances, each adding to the mystique surrounding this multifaceted artist. From her early days as a chorus girl to her breakthrough roles in Hollywood, Drake's career was defined by a relentless pursuit of artistic expression and reinvention. 
Beginning in 1932, Drake embarked on her path to stardom under a series of stage names. She dazzled audiences in nightclubs and reviews, earning acclaim for her dynamic performances and youthful energy. Critics hailed her as a rising star, with one review in the Indiana Gazette singling her out as the most noteworthy newcomer whose talent and presence heralded a bright future in the spotlight. Drake's versatility as a performer was evident from the start, with her ability to sing, dance, and play multiple instruments captivating audiences wherever she went. Her transition to the stage name Rita Rio in 1935 marked a new chapter in her career, as she continued to showcase her musical talents and magnetic stage presence in venues across Broadway. Despite her success in the nightclub circuit, Drake's aspirations extended beyond the confines of live performance. In 1940, she made the leap to Hollywood, where she underwent screen tests under another name. Studio publicity during Drake's heyday often misrepresented her background, erroneously claiming Mexican origin and the birth name of Rita Nola. This fabrication only added to the intrigue surrounding Drake, whose striking features and versatile talents led to a wide range of roles in film and television. Throughout her career, Drake embraced roles that showcased her versatility as an actress, often portraying ethnic characters such as Latinas, Middle Easterners, American Indians, or Gypsies. One of her most notable performances came in 1942, opposite screen legends Bob Hope and Bing Crosby in Road to Morocco, where she played the Arab girl Mihirma, captivating audiences with her charm and wit. In addition to her ethnic portrayals, Drake also demonstrated her acting prowess in non-musical roles, such as her lead role as a big band singer in the 1944 film Hot Rhythm. However, it was her role as the American Indian maid in Beyond the Forest opposite Bette Davis that remains etched in the annals of cinematic history. In 1949, Drake further showcased her comedic talents in the comedy The Girl from Jones Beach, where she starred alongside Eddie Bracken in a non-ethnic, non-musical role, a testament to her versatility as an actress. Doña Azrita As Rita, Doña's journey to stardom took another turn when she screen-tested twice for Paramount's Aloma of the South Seas, aiming to secure a role alongside the iconic Dorothy L'Amour. L'Amour, familiar with Rita from their days in New York City, recommended her to the film's producer, Buddy De Silva. With her foot in the door, Rita Nola's career trajectory took a dramatic shift as Paramount signed her to a contract. In a move typical of Hollywood's penchant for reinvention, the studio rebranded her once again, this time as Donna Drake, a name that would soon become synonymous with glamour and stardom. The studio wasted no time in orchestrating a massive publicity campaign to introduce their newest starlet to the world. Newspaper articles and mentions in gossip columns heralded Doña Drake as the next big thing, spreading her image and statistics far and wide. According to Paramount's carefully crafted narrative, she stood at 5 feet tall, weighed a mere 90 pounds, and was a youthful 20-year-old. In reality, Donna was 26, but such details mattered little in the world of showbiz, where image often trumped reality. Paramount's publicity machine crafted a carefully curated image of Donya Drake, highlighting her blue-green eyes, chestnut hair, and exotic heritage, a mix of Mexican, Irish, and French ancestry. She was also named by Alpha Epsilon Pi of Georgia's Emory College as the girl they'd like to have in the backseat of a car without gas and no ration book. In 1943, after only two more film appearances and soon after a column blurb of Drake writing and starring in a film about an all-girls orchestra, Paramount dropped her contract in the summer and Donna found herself a free agent in a company town. But that didn't bother her and she said, It was wonderful at first. I thought I was on my way to becoming a film actress. But you can't make a screen career out of combing Lamore's hair or chasing Bob Hope in one picture after another. When I would tell this to Mr. Da Silva, who was always very nice to me, he would tell me just to be patient, that my turn was coming. As for the rumblings that Donya was not an actress, she simply stated, Of course I'm not an actress, but other studios thought I was worth borrowing for good parts and made an offer for me, all of which Paramount turned down. You know perfectly well that you don't have to be an actress to go over in pictures. Among girls my age, how many are there on the screen who can act? 
The secret of screen success is largely a matter of a good part and a good director. He's the guy who holds your fate in his hands. Even Bet Davis can go sour without a good director, while one who knows his business can make most any average girl look as if she really had talent. Donna Drake Beyond the Cameras when Drake was filming the 1944 production, Hot Rhythm, fate intervened in the form of a chance encounter with William Travilla, a renowned figure in the world of fashion. Introduced by her dear friend Joan Blondell, Drake and Travilla's connection was instant, sparking a whirlwind romance that culminated in marriage just 10 days later on August 19, 1944, at Santa Monica City Hall. The wedding was a modest affair, with Drake adorned in a plaid cotton shirt, a pair of Levi's, and a bandana headdress. Her bridal ensemble completed with an orchid corsage provided by her devoted fiancé. Despite the joyous occasion, the couple faced challenges unique to the era. Interracial marriage was not only taboo but illegal in many parts of the United States, casting a shadow over their union. In the face of societal prejudice, Drake remained resolute, continuing her career in Hollywood, albeit in roles that often emphasized her exotic heritage. Throughout their marriage, Drake's career flourished, with notable appearances alongside legendary figures such as John Wayne, Claudette Colbert, and Bette Davis. Despite her professional success, Drake's personal life was not without its struggles. She grappled with emotional difficulties exacerbated by the demands of her craft, finding it challenging to shed the character she portrayed on screen. In the midst of life's challenges, Drake and Travilla found joy in the arrival of their daughter, Nia Novella, in August 1951. Despite the joys of motherhood, Drake remained committed to her career gracing both the silver screen and television screens with her captivating presence.